Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this episode, uh, we are um, hoping to show you an artwork, and as we do always, a small story, a short story, and a wise saying, and um, we also introduce an Islamic scientist. The artwork is a uh, uh, piece called Turat, which is, means heritage, and we can see it here in this catalog. That is the artwork. It's called Heritage, as we said, and it is 1993. This artwork has been shown in so many places. Um, it resides now in the one of these um, um, Arab uh, Gulf countries, and it has a beautiful two lines of poetry by Abu Atahia. We'll see the uh, the um, the um, the poetry first. This is this is one of the Abu Atahia's day ones, which is poetry book, as you know very well. Let me see where it is. The poetry says. إذا المرء لم يعتق من المال رقه فتملكه المال الذي هو مالكه ألا إنما مالي الذي أنا منفق وليس لي المال الذي أنا تاركه إذا كنت ذا مال فبادر به الذي يحق وإلا استهلكته هوالكه The meaning of the, of the poetry is, uh, is beautiful meaning and it, um, somehow um, it's, it's put certain kind of um, uh, facts about life and about money. It is about money. The, 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 the piece, piece of this uh, poetry is about money. The poet is saying that if you have money, it's better to use it. And the money which you leave, it is not yours. Because, as he says, the money which is you have always have something to be spent on, doesn't matter if it is in your favor or otherwise. So this is the uh, general meaning. Of course, here we can we can put a lot of, uh, shall we say, um, explanation about this uh, when it comes to effect of um, uh, uh, people, shall we say, collecting money all their lives and sometimes they lose their lives for it uh, and sometimes they create um, animosities, animosities between um, uh, their own family members. Sometimes they uh, take the money um, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, um, what got it? I mean, let me find a word for it. Um, uh, in rightly, I mean, they are captured the money in ways that it is not right. Um, uh, they, they do so many devices to get money. Uh, out of it, um, some of it by good means, some of it by bad means. But the money, when you when the person has the money, doesn't matter how it came from. If the person doesn't use it in the right way in his life or her lifetime, then what is left later on is somebody else's possibilities and somebody else's responsibilities. So that's what comes to the to the um, the uh, the uh, the poem. Now. Uh, this artwork has been, as we said, published in a few places um, and has also been um, uh, uh, exhibited uh, in a few places. Also, you could see that it is in this catalog. This is the artwork, and that's the catalog. This is the catalog, which is um, 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 an exhibition of mine which is done by the University of, 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 uh, of Oxford in 1993. Um, and as we said, uh, the artwork is... Um, and of course, it has been seen so many other exhibitions. But anyway, um, uh, um, we don't want to say, dwell too much on that. <coughs> but still, um, the artwork is, is, um, is residing now in one of these countries which is we spoke about. Next is the uh, uh, story, 
short story. This is one of the uh, uh, one of these not exactly unusual, but really um, uh, fantastic story of education by application. Um, this is let me find it here. This I got this um, from social media, uh, but it is really it has a lot of wisdom in it, and it is of course it is written in Arabic here. I will uh, try to explain it uh, very quickly. That the there was this old man who was a uh, who was a, a, a merchant, um, and uh, he has three sons. When he was very old and he felt that he needs to shall we say uh, he might die soon so he came to his uh, children and um, uh, uh, gave them a uh, certain kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, um, uh, advice and this is to examine their abilities of salesmanship how they're going to think they're going to do um, because he has a lot of experience and he wants them to be able to survive later on in his in the business, and he doesn't want, shall we say, them to uh, lose customers and not to know uh, new ideas how to to sell and the rest of it. So he did, what he did is uh, he sent them to um, uh, uh, monasteries to a Buddhist. One of them has been sent to a mon monastery, a Buddhist monastery, and he gave him some combs. Uh, the combs, of course, usually, um, especially if you are talking about uh, Buddhist uh, monasteries, most of the um, uh, Buddhist, um, shall we say, uh, the people who are, shall we say, looking after the uh, the monastery, usually they don't have hair because of them they, they shave it as part of uh, um, being um, near, very near near to nature and doesn't want to have any any. And apart from them, of course, they have been bald. But anyway, some of them, even the people who have got uh, hair, they shave it. So he asked this first person uh, of, his, of his children is to take some combs, i.e. combs to, sh to, 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 shall we say, to clean the, 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 the hair and to comb the hair. He sent them to uh, places where there isn't much hair around. And he wants to find out how this um, uh, uh, child of his is going to be able to sell combs to the bald and shaved heads. I mean, he, he gave, as, as we spoke, he gave the, these children uh, these combs to the, and they start, shall we say, looking. But they were shocked because they know that um, when they go to, to these um, uh, monasteries, uh, people are not going to buy combs, especially the people are looking after the monasteries anyway. Uh, so what, that's what happened, and he sent them, and, and after um, a few days, um, uh, they came back, uh, all of them. Um, the first said that he was able to sell the uh, um, uh, monastery people, or the monastery, uh, shall we say, uh, yeah, well, I mean, management, if you want to, whatever it is, um, uh, three combs, three pieces of comb. The, um, the father said to, to, to his son, how we, you were able to sell uh, 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 them these um, uh, combs. He said, uh, <clears throat> I uh, convinced them that they can use uh, the uh, combs uh, when they are um, scratching their backs instead of combing their hair, which they don't have. So that is one. The next one, he said that he, he uh, sold 10 combs instead of three. He said 10 combs. When his father say, asked him, how did you... Um, convinced him to buy all these combs, um, said that um, I convinced them that there are people who are visiting them, they might need combs, therefore they bought some combs to be sold for their visitors. The next uh, 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 child said to his, uh, uh, to his father, I sold a thousand combs. 
He said, how did you do that? He said, I convinced them that um, writing one phrase of Buddha's on every comb and give it as a gift to some people who come to them that will make people use it as a way of leading their life. So the whole idea is that these three children, one of them is sold only three, the other one only sold at, uh, at ten, and the, and the third one sold a thousand. Why he was able to sell a thousand? Because he convinced the, the people on the, on the monasteries that uh, writing some phrases of Buddhas on each comb will, I give it away as a gift, will make people become more Buddhist and more believing in Buddha. So it's always going to be coming back to belief. Now, the, the idea here is that, of course, in one way, um, the, the, um, the thing here is that, of course, we are not going to dwell much also again on, on the use of religion uh, in commerce as it's happening here, uh, because everybody will notice that and everybody will know that. But again, somehow, uh, some children are more aware of using that, and some of them are not as aware. Uh, and at the same time, the old man was, shall we say, um, uh, preparing his uh, children for the tough life in the in, in, in future. Therefore, he was very happy for them to find solutions. So that is the story. I hope that um, this gives us some uh, thoughts and ideas uh, about how we... Um, uh, see things and um, uh, value them in the right value. The next point is a wise saying. This wise saying is by Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib. Um, Ali ibn Abi Talib is um, um, the fourth Khalif in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Islamic history and he was beloved by all Muslims um, uh, all the time uh, and of course he has also a lot of uh, 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 nice, uh, beautiful sayings because he has so much experience um, of people and in life and in all that kind of complex uh, complexities of the um, complications of the uh, of uh, of, uh, of life when you are dealing with uh, different groups um, and dealing with different circumstances in life. What he said, let me write, read it in Arabic. It says. العاجز من لا يقدر على أن يستطيع أن من لا يستطيع إصلاح نفسه العاجز من لا يستطيع إصلاح نفسه. The meaning is that um, the person who is not able to correct himself is the incapable. It means the the the, the peak of capability, the peak of being able to do things which is you want to do in life is to be able to correct yourself when you make mistakes. And you, if you start having uh, bad habits or um, doing bad things, the moment you have the, the, the ability to correct yourself, that is the most powerful strength any person can have. So that is the uh, wise saying of Sayyidina Ali. <clears throat> now, the, the next is the Islamic scientist. The Islamic scientist called Ali ibn Ridwan al-Masri. He is from Egypt. Um, he is very well known. Okay, Ali ibn Ridwan, who is Abu al-Hassan ibn Ridwan ibn Ali ibn Ja'far. Uh, anyway, um, he was um, uh, a very famous um, uh, doctor. Uh, and um, uh, he was also knowing so much about medicine. It is not only that he was capable of curing um, uh, uh, illnesses as a doctor, but he was also 
if you like, a knowledgeable about medicine. Uh, when you're talking about there's different types of medicine, history, applications, origins, all that kind of stuff. And of course, um, we have, uh, as it is here, this is the, the book, which is we um, have the um, uh, uh, short introduction. Uh, it is here. Uh, this book is very famous again. It's called Ayun al Amba fi Tabakati al Atibba. And uh, uh, that is one the uh, what comes to this. Now the uh, the book, of course, there are so much of the what comes to the uh, books which is um, speaks about Islamic science um, and different. I mean, there are tons of them. But I mean, it's, it's, I'm just bringing a few examples here for the interest of the viewer. Um, hope that the viewer will be able to go back and look at uh, them uh, himself uh, or herself. Um, and um, Islamic history is full of, uh, of, uh, of um, um, uh, so much work when it comes to science. In every section of science we know today. Going back to the, um, because it looks to me that I haven't explained um, the um, wisdom by saying of Sayyidina Ali, um, as it is um, written here in, in English, uh, let me see. This is the, how it is really written in English, as being translated in this beautiful book. This beautiful book has so much wise sayings and ideas and thoughts. Uh, what is being said here is the man of least capacity is the one who shows himself incapable of self-correction. So this is exactly how it has been translated. Uh, my translation was not as, if you like, elaborate. Um, and uh, so the man of least capacity is the one who shows himself incapable of self-correction. That is the... Uh, um, uh, was saying by Sayyidina Ali and thank you very much indeed and see you later